Morning all. How's everybody doing? Uh, thanks for coming into this live stream. This is a bit of a special live stream because I'm just doing this to give a settings overview on the new price action toolkit EA. So there's going to be no analysis or anything in here. It's just uh, a, a settings overview. Uh, and to get a little bit of feedback from you guys as to um, anything you'd like to see changed or um, any additions you'd like to see in it as well. So uh, if you can just keep questions uh, until the end, if you can, um, if you want to ask them in the chat while I'm going through this, um, that's absolutely fine. But I'm not going to answer questions on the fly uh, as I'm going through this because I want to just rattle through basically all the settings and explain what the EA does and how it works. And then obviously we'll have a question and answer session at the end um, where we can have a look at everything in more detail. OK, so um, to get started, uh, for those of you that are not familiar with EAs, basically, when you've purchased an EA through the marketplace, it appears in your expert advisors market folder. Uh, mine is actually sitting here because I haven't purchased it through the market, but it will be sitting in there. So to activate it, all you do is literally just drag it onto the chart and then you will get the settings. So one thing you need to be made uh, aware of and make sure you have checked is the allow live trading checkbox. That needs to be checked. Uh, and then in the inputs section, uh, we'll go through all of these settings in due course. Um, but the uh, one thing that you need to be made aware of is the uh, magic number. Actually, the magic number will appear on your EA at the top here in the miscellaneous sec functions section. But you just need to make sure you have a unique magic number for every instance of the EA, okay? Because the EAs work on magic numbers so they know which trades they've placed and which trades they are managing. So make sure that is a unique number for every instance you put onto a chart, okay? So I'll click the OK button. That places the EA onto the chart. Uh, and we'll do a quick rundown here of... Um, what you can see on the screen to start off with. So at the top here, we have input boxes, all right? So what these will do is they will allow you to change uh, on your chart on the fly, the TP, stop loss, and risk settings for every trade that you take, okay? So the top one there is SL, which is your stop loss, TP is your take profit, and percentage is your risk. And that is the percentage risk um, of your balance you are going to place on this trade and your lot size will be auto calculated for you based on your stop loss. All right. So um, that setting up there is basically the default. And as you can see down in the bottom left hand corner here, uh, we have a stop loss mode, which is defaulted to pip amount. OK, so what this will do is we'll place your stop loss, a pip amount or a point amount away from your entry. So what I'll do is I'll quickly take a trade now. Uh, price is coming down. OK, so I'm going to take a quick sell here uh, at market it's by pressing that button. And as you can see, it's placed an entry and it's put the stop 400 points away from my entry. My TP is 800 points away from the entry as well. OK, so that's basically what those are. And the lot size here in this case is 1.14 has been auto calculated for me based on half a percent risk for 400 points. Now this is a $10,000 account. So as you can see, it's risking 50 odd dollars on the trade for me. I think the actual balance on this account is just over 10,229. So um, that's basically how it works. If I decide I want to get into a new position with 1.5% risk, OK, I'll take a new position there. And what it will do is it will add a much larger position. That's 3.34, four, uh, sorry, 3.43 lots. So a much bigger uh, position because I'm risking more. Now, there's different modes as well you can have for taking positions. You can either have a uh, stop loss mode there or you can set it to be last candle. And what that will do is it will place the stop above the last candle if I zoom in. So last candle mode will actually place my trade here now, but it will place the stop loss above the high of the last candle. So if I hit sell now, you can see that stop loss has gone in there. It slipped a little bit. Um, so it's just under the top of the candle, but it's basically placed it there. Uh, and obviously I'm on one minute chart, so we get a bit more slippage. Um, 
And the other setting or the other stop loss mode that you have is uh, this candle. So if I place a buy order, I'll wait for this candle to get a bit bigger. Let's just close these out quickly. Uh, I'll wait for this candle to get a bit larger and then we'll be able to see where that places it. So there's the high of this candle and the low of this candle. If I place a buy now, um, it will place the stop at the low of that candle and there's an offset of 10 pips there roughly. Um, and then obviously my TP goes up there and you see the lot size it's taken now is 23.89 long. Okay, so uh, those are the modes. You can change those by just hitting the stop loss mode button and it will flick between last candle, uh, this candle, and pip amount okay just got stopped out on that trade there it wasn't a trade i was taking obviously to make money but um and this is obviously a demo account i'm not taking these massive trades obviously uh so basically that's how those uh risk functions work okay and the idea being is um if you see a nice setup so let's say for example that's a nice pause candle and before that we had a hammer so i'm looking to go long what i can do is say i want to get long and i want to place my stop under the last candle and i can place a pending order above that last candle as well so i can place a buy stop above the last candle and the stop loss below the last candle so it allows you to enter the market in any way you see fit so i'm happy if this now is going to reject down here and push up higher that i want to get in when we break the high of that candle and my stop is going to be there so i'm looking for a momentum move to get me into a position long and at any time i can cancel those orders with a cancel pending button so looking at the buttons we've got the buttons are pretty self-explanatory hopefully sell at market press that and it gets you straight into a sell order and obviously it's placed my stop above the last candle because that's what I've got set and obviously there's a bit of slippage there um, we can change that as well um, which is the pending order and stop loss loss offset in points it's set at the moment to 10 um, you will get a bit of slippage um, when you're placing orders especially on one minute charts so what you might want to do is maybe increase that to 20 points um, so that it places it a little bit further away so you can adjust that in the settings and obviously if you want to measure if you click your middle mouse button that will bring up your crosshair or you can hit Control f on your keyboard to bring up your crosshair uh, you can measure what it's going to be placed at so there's 20 points um, 10 points was obviously very, very, very tight for this particular instrument, which is the DAX. So um, so that's basically how that uh, positioning works. So obviously I've done a sell order there and I've sold at market. Um, if I want to buy at market, I'm just going to change this to pips quickly. Um, let's just close that trade out. If I want to uh, buy at market, I just hit the buy button and that will automatically place my TP and stop loss levels, as you can see at 400 and 800. These can be adjusted as you like. So if I wanted to say, actually, I want a 200 pip stop loss, I can adjust that there and then I can hit the modify stop loss button and it will adjust my stop loss up to the new level that I've set. Equally, I wouldn't recommend this, but if you wanted to extend your stops, you can just hit the modify stop loss button and the same for your TPs. So if price is moving in your direction, you think actually this is going to go higher, you can modify your TP on the fly. And this will modify the TP for every single trade that you've taken. So if I take another buy now, I've got two positions on there and I decide I want to go to 1800 TP. I can modify all my TPs at the same time and it moves both TPs up there for me. And the same with my stop losses. We'll move them at the same time. Just close that trade out. Nice 1.1% profit there. Um, obviously, I'm not trading any particular strategy i'm just hitting buttons at the minute but anyway that's how it works um as you can see i hit the close button there the close button close out every single position that you have and i've covered the modify stop loss and modify tp so you can see what they do now if we take a buy here with one new position you can see there's an orange line drawn in uh, that is the average price of the positions that you have so if i take another buy down here you'll see that the average will now move so that it is between those two positions. So that is now my new average price that I have at the moment. And obviously you can see the profit percentage for your position is displayed there. We're risking one and a half percent. So we should be taking profit in a percentage basis as well. Um, what I can do, I'm just waiting for price to move, hopefully up here, uh, is I can then move my stops automatically to break even at any time I want to. So you have two buttons here for stop uh, for break evens, one just called break even and one called BE average. And what that is, that is break even average line. So if you hit the break even button, I need some trades to go into profit. So I'm just going to hit another one down there. Um, uh, 
when your trades going to profit, if you want to move your stops to break even, if you hit the break even button, what it will do is it will automatically place your stop losses at break even for every individual trade that you have open. So hopefully price will push up and I'll demonstrate that for you in a second. I had a nice big strong close candle there. Um, so hopefully we'll get a big uh, momentum push in a second and I can demonstrate that for you. If you hit the BE average button, what it will do is it will move all of your stop losses to this orange line, which is your break even average. OK, so uh, there we go. So if I hit BE average now, you can see all my stop losses will have been put to that one level on those trades. So they've all been moved to 13883.5, which is that level there. If I hit break even uh, button on its own, you'll see it moves all the break evens individually to each individual trade. So they all now have different ones set. OK, so that's basically what those buttons do. I'm going to move the break evens back to average there. Uh, and then obviously, if I want to as well, good time to demonstrate this button. We've got the close MP button that closes your most profitable trade for you. So if I hit that button now, the most profitable trade at the bottom is automatically closed out. And then I can quickly move my break evens to the new average. So I've locked in some profit and I've also locked in all those trades and I can't make a loss. OK, um, anytime you can just close out another more profitable trade and then move to break even to protect your profits and then just close out when you're happy with everything. OK, so that's basically demonstrating how all of those buttons work. The other buttons um, I will show you now are sell stop, buy stop, sell stop last and buy stop last. Uh, buy stop and sell stop will place a order at the candle that you are currently on. So this one here, in this case, uh, buy stop and sell stop last will place an order at the high and low of the previous candle, the last candle. So if I hit now uh, buy stop, it will place it above the high of that candle, which was when I hit it. Uh, if I now hit uh, buy stop now on this one, it will place it above this candle here. OK, so it places it on the candle that you're on. If I want to cancel them, I can click the cancel pending at any time and just get out of those because price is moving against me. I don't fancy them, don't want them anymore. So I can just cancel the orders and get out of the trades or get out of the pending orders. If I hit buy stop last, you'll see that it will place a buy stop above the last candles high. Um, and if I hit sell stop last, it will place a sell stop below the last candle. Obviously, you wouldn't place a sell stop last there because uh, price is actually below that level. Um, but if price was to push up, further up to here and I hit sell stop last it will place the sell stop below that candle there okay um, so that's an overview of all the buttons that we've got there so this is what the EA is designed for um, it's something that's lacking in MT4 which you find in a lot of other futures trading platforms like Ninja Trader, Trader Vate. you have quick trade buttons to get in and out of the market fast if you're scalping low time frames like M5 or M1 you need to be in and out quickly so if I hit sell stop last now it places the order underneath that low of that candle so I've got a pending order now bracketing where we are whichever way price moves now I'm going to get into a position and hopefully that momentum will carry me forward so I can get out of the position fast okay and this is obviously on a five minute chart now um, and obviously I might decide actually there's a really nice potential uh, resistance there that was support which probably will turn into resistance if we get back up there so I might think right I want to actually set my TPs there so if I'm going to get into that long there I want to actually adjust my TP to be 1200 to make sure that I have my TP out before we get to that level and obviously once the trade is triggered then it will adjust the TP I haven't got a trade on at the moment if I hit the buy now, obviously the trade goes there and I say, actually, I want that a little bit higher than that. And I can modify my stop accordingly and also with my stop losses as well. OK, so we just close that position out, making some good profit here, aren't we? Uh, not doing too bad. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, we're not here to make profit. This is a demo account anyway. Um, so so that's the trade functions. Uh, and I just cancel those pending orders off. So what I'm going to do now is go through the settings to show you um, all the settings and what they all do. So we've covered um, the uh, pending order and stop loss offset. And that is basically the distance it will place the pending orders when you place them. And this is for automated, automated trading and for manual trading with the buttons. I'll look at the automated trading um, functions for you in a second as well. 
Um, th sorry, the, the main buttons we've got at the top here, the miscellaneous functions, are the show trading buttons, true or false. If you set that to false, the buttons will not show. Neither will um, the entry boxes or the stop loss mode button down there. Um, if you have activate uh, buttons in tester set to true, um, this is mainly for the strategy tester. You don't; it doesn't affect it if you put it on a live chart. But if you want to use the uh, EA in the strategy tester and actually use the buttons to take trades in the strategy tester, i.e., practice trading, practice scalping, um, that will allow you to do that. So these buttons will actually be functional. Uh, all of these buttons will be functional in the strategy tester. The only bit you don't get in the strategy tester is the input boxes. Those don't work in the strategy tester. So if you were to use this input for activate buttons in tester, it would automatically use your stop loss and take profits, basically, uh, that you enter in the target and profits section. But to, uh, next to each section as well that we've got in the settings, it says buttons and auto on the ones that affect both buttons and automated trading, because you can use this as an EA to just automatically get you into positions based on price action candlesticks, which obviously we will cover in a second as well. Um, so that's the miscellaneous functions. Risk, fairly straightforward. Um, risk of balance per entry, 0 0.5 is the default. That is what will appear there when you uh, activate the EA. And obviously you can change that on the fly as you wish. But as default, um, it comes in at 0 0.5. So it's half percent risk per trade. And that is calculated on your stop loss. So your lot sizing is auto calculated for you. So you don't have to worry about what size position to take when you take a trade. You're automatically going to risk half a percent in this case based on wherever you put your stop loss. And that will auto calculate for you. Scaling in. Um, this is a an area that I added in um, because it's something that a lot of traders struggle with, which is adding into winning trades. So when you're trading, uh, particularly scalping, uh, but this is true of all um, trades that you take, uh, people find it difficult to add to their winning positions. And when a trade goes in your direction, if, I, if you were to go long here and all of a sudden we've got a big propulsion candle go in and then another big propulsion candle, the temptation is actually to take profit what you should be doing is waiting for uh, a pullback and continuation because your trade is working out. So you should be adding into your position, bringing your average price up and scaling into that position, assuming that you are going to be correct. That obviously maximizes the profit that you're going to make when you get a trade right. Um, so rather than uh, taking profits quickly, which is what we all tend to do, you should be adding to positions when you get them right. So scaling to winners will do this automatically for you. When you set that to true, um, it will automatically add a new position based on a distance between entries. So if you were to get in, for example, here and you had this set to 100 points, as price moves 100 points in your favor, it will take another trade. And as it moves another 100 points, it will take another trade. And as the price keeps going in your direction, it will keep scaling in, enlarging your position, which will obviously exponentially increase the speed of your profit, that 1.5% or whatever the profit will get much bigger, much quicker if you add to your position as it's going in your direction. So you can adjust the amount that it will um, uh, take trades at. And obviously, again, this is in points, so 100 points or 400 points or whatever you want to scale in at. And that will be dependent on the ATR of the pair that you're trading typically. Um, you can also scale in on candle close, not tick. So if we, um, let's just set this to 50 and uh, see if we can get it to scale into this position, which is going in our direction at the moment, long. So what I've done is I set it to 50, so it'll get in pretty quick, which is there. Okay, so you see it's taken a second position because we moved up 50 pips. Obviously, 50, 50 points in this particular case, I probably would think is a little bit too close together to scale in. But uh, just to demonstrate the point, obviously, now it's adding a new position in there. And you saw it added it in while this candle is moving. The other option you have is to add to winning positions only on candle close. And what that will do is it will wait for this candle to close. And if the close of this candle is more than 50 points from the previous entry, it will add a new position. OK, so if this candle was to close down here, it wouldn't be 50 points higher than the last position it added in. It wouldn't add a new position. OK, so you can have it either 
automatically getting in as price moves. And if you get one massive propulsion candle like that, it will have scaled in like that for you. And by the time you get up to there, you'll have an absolute fortune in profit. Or the other option, obviously, is you wait for that candle to close and it will take one position up there. OK, and that's what that option is. So you have the option of uh, getting in very, very fast or getting in only on candle closes. And again, that's a personal preference. And it depends really on what time frames you're trading and how aggressive you want to be. Um, targets and stops, fairly self-explanatory. Stop loss per position is 400 points. That is what feeds into here initially. And your take profit 800 or whatever you want it to be. Um, you can also use ATR uh, instead of a fixed stop loss and take profit. So if I set this now to true, uh, you can see we've got the ATR to use set to five. And we've got a stop loss ATR multiplier and a take profit ATR multiplier here too. And what this will do is it will take the ATR five of the instrument that you're on and the time frame that you're on and it will place your stop loss one times that number behind your entry and that uh, two times that number ahead of your entry for your take profit. So um, basically what that is doing is using the ATR of the pair which is displayed up there when you have that set on which in this case is 444 to automatically place um, your TPs and your stop losses. Okay. So that's basically what that function does there. Um, and again, you can adjust these multipliers as, as you see fit. I'll just close those positions out in a minute. Um, so I'm just testing that one sec. Uh, right, so uh, that's those. Um, those apply mainly to your um, automated trading, which we'll cover in a second. Um, Exit strategies, um, auto exit at percent profit target. So what this does is when you hit a certain profit target, in this case, I'm going to set, let's say, let's just go for, I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll go for 0.25%. We'll try and get um, a quick hit with a couple of positions. Let's take a quick long there. Um, so you can see you've got your profit display here. When I get to 0.25% profit, it will automatically close out my position. And I'm scaling in obviously fairly quickly here with the auto uh, trades. So hopefully we'll get a little bit of a push on this and you'll see this automatically get out of the position with a quarter of a percent profit. So again, for scalping, um, you need to be in and out pretty fast. There you go. So we've taken our second position, which is 50 points apart. Um, when you get into these additional positions uh, and price moves quickly in your direction, your percentage gain will increase a lot faster. And obviously, if price pushes against you, your drawdown will also increase a lot faster. So you need to obviously be aware of that. Um, so what that will do, that setting is automatically get you out of the position when the total of all of your positions equals a percentage profit target. OK, in this case, it's going against me. So let's scale into another one down here. Uh, Obviously, I wouldn't in when you're scalping, I wouldn't normally say scale into losers because obviously when you're scalping tiny time frames, you can have it pushing against you very, very quickly, especially when we have things like war, <laughs> which are potentially happening at the moment. Um, but we'll see if we can get this one up to a profit target. I'll just add into positions and um, probably add into another one when we get down to here. If we get down there, we'll see how that goes. Um, so that's your exit strategies. There is another exit strategy called close trade on reversal candle. Um, now, what this does is when price is moving in your direction, it will put a trailing stop underneath the low of the last bull candle or bear candle, depending on the direction of your trade. I won't turn it on now because it will get us out of those positions. But what it does is when we have price, let's take this as an example here. Let's say we took a short trade here. What it will do is when price moves in our favor, it will automatically put a an invisible stop loss at the high of that last down candle. And as price pushes down, it will trail that invisible stop behind that down candle. Uh, and again, it would move it to there. It would then move it to there. It would move it to there, there, there. And then we had an up candle. So what it will do now is it will use that as the last stop loss. And when price breaks back above that level, it will get you out of the position. OK, so what it's designed to do is when you get a nice, strong trending move like this, 
it will automatically get you out when there's signs of bullishness. So here, you would have got out of that trade because that down candle would have had the stop placed on it and it would have placed it there. So actually, that would have been your exit on this position. Okay, And the same, obviously, if price pushes up in your way, it trails the stop underneath the bull candles. So in this case, your stop would have been trailed up to there and you would have got out there. Okay, So it's when price breaks below the low of the last bull candle or above the high of the last bear candle, depending on whether you're taking a long or a short trade. I'm just going to quickly add another buy down here to bring the average down, see if we get a push up and try and get that to close out automatically for us. Um, so those are your exit strategies. You don't have to use either of those, obviously, um, but it's handy uh, if obviously you're taking trades on maybe slightly higher time frame and you need to step away for a minute. You can have it to automatically quickly open the settings and get it to automatically get you out if price suddenly turns in uh, away against your direction. Uh, trailing stops we have also available so you can use trailing stops pretty self-explanatory if you set that to true and price moves in your direction it will automatically trail the stops for you um, it will have a trailing stop distance in points um, typically you would normally set that to whatever your stop loss is and then a trailing stop start and that is the level at which price has to move in your favor for it to start trailing your stop. So when price moves 200 points in my favor, in this case, it will start to trail my stop up for me. Okay, and if price pushes down, obviously it will stay where it is. So it drags your trailing stop um, after a set number of points by a set number of points. You can also have this uh, trail on candle close, not on tick. So for example here, it would only have trailed the stop when you get a close of the candle, um, which means that any wicks that you get won't necessarily take you out. Um, so this is actually my preferred way of trailing stop, which is why that is set to true as default. Um, so I'm looking for price to actually close and then I will adjust my stop based on where that candle closed, which means if you get a big wick down and then a push up, that big push up will not drag your stop up it won't actually move your stop until the candle closes but you can play with these in the strategy tester and see how they work anyway same with all of these settings uh, trail stop below candles instead of points if you set this to true as price moves in your direction it will automatically trail your stop at the low of x number of candles so here for example if we got in with a sell there and we had it set to two it would be there and as price moved down, it would just drag your stop loss two candles behind as price moved down and then it would stop you out. OK, this is something that somebody's asked for. It isn't something I particularly use. And the reason I don't like using that is because it quite often gets you stopped out very quickly, um, because what you will find is you will get a wick that will actually end as a candle in your direction. But the wick will take you out because you've trailed your stop too tight behind price. So personally, my preference would be to use a trailing stop on uh, close of the candle and use uh, distance in points. But there is an option there, as I know some people like to uh, trail behind candles. And again, if you want a big trailing stop, you could set that to maybe five candles and obviously we'll keep dragging that trailing stop uh, a further distance. Um, draw sessions and opening ranges. Okay, so the... Uh, EA is set to automatically draw in opening ranges. And this is a strategy that I use and many traders use at the open, um, which is the opening range breakout strategy. So what we have is two sessions. We have the Frankfurt Open and the New York Open. And you can set the times of the Frankfurt Open and the New York Open, which will be based on your broker. So for my broker, the Frankfurt Open is at 10 a.m. UK time. And uh, for the New York Open, it is at... Uh, sorry, not new, not UK time. That is your broker time. Uh, so 10 a.m. Uh, broker time is the Frankfurt Open and 4.30 uh, broker time is the New York Open. And what it will do is it will automatically draw in lines for you. Let me come out to a bigger time frame so we can see them. It will automatically draw in these lines for you at the Open. So that is the Frankfurt Open there and that is the New York Open there. OK, so when you set the EA initially, it will automatically draw in those lines for you. Let's go down to a lower time frame. 
See if we can get that trade closed out, 0.25% profit. Um, so the opening ranges, uh, it will automatically get drawn in for you at a set time. Okay, so what the EA will do, and I'll show you this in the strategy tester in a second, we'll do some more work in the strategy tester, um, is it will draw a horizontal line on the chart at the uh, close from the open to the close of that particular candle. So in this case, I'm looking to have the five minute opening range drawn on my chart and the 90 minute opening range drawn on my chart. And there's reasons for these. Uh, and for the New York Open, I want the five minute opening range and the uh, 90 minute opening range. So you can select two different opening ranges and you can also draw those in on your chart or not have them drawn in on your chart. Okay, so you can set those to false if you don't want this feature to, to be used. You have an end of trading day as well, um, which you need to set for the end of your trading day via your broker. And, and this will vary on each individual instrument. So most Forex pairs will tend to close at uh, 11.59 broker time. Uh, things like indices will have different closing times. So something like 10.15 may be the close of the DAX for your broker. So you would need to set this um, depending on what your broker is. And you can easily see that by looking at this dotted line. If you haven't got that dotted line, that is your uh, period separators. So if you zoom into your chart uh, on the one minute and go back and see when your broker closed which is there. So on my broker here, it's 10.54 on the DAX. So that is the, uh, it's 10.55 actually, but it's uh, that is what I would put in as my um, close, basically, end of uh, trading day for the DAX. And obviously for FX and other things, you'll have different ones there. So you would alter that dependent on uh, what you're going to use. And there's two reasons that's used. Uh, first reason is the opening range lines of New York will get drawn to the uh, end of trading day, which is what's set there. Uh, the Frankfurt opening range will get drawn to the New York open. And we'll see this on the uh, strategy tester in a minute when we have a look at it. Um, so the idea behind these settings is that you will do what's called an opening range breakout. So let me just quickly... Uh, and add another buy there. Just going to see if we can get this actually to close out automatically for us. Uh, we'll quickly go to the strategy tester. And uh, we will do a quick opening range on the five minute chart. Actually, let's do the one minute chart uh, for the DAX. I don't know how much data I've got in here. Um, let's just go from the 1st of February should have enough data in there up to today uh, we'll start that okay so uh, it's going to start obviously uh, moving through now we're starting on the 23rd of February which is uh, yesterday wow there's no data in here is there okay um, that's not very helpful <laughs> no data right uh, let me just load in some data on sec Mm, that's not very useful. Okay, let's do five minute opening range, five minute chart, that's gonna work just as well. So uh, five minute chart we're on now. Uh, I haven't got enough data in there to draw the opening ranges in either. Right, okay. This isn't very useful. Uh, one second, let me just change the dates uh, I'm not quite sure why that's not drawing the opening ranges in should be drawing the opening ranges in there I had this problem on this um, this Robo Forex broker, for some reason, I had this problem uh, the other day. It decided it didn't want to draw in the opening ranges. And it was something to do with the data in there. Uh, it worked on all other platforms, but not on Robo Forex for some reason. So I can't show you that feature, 
but if you go and put it in the strategy tester, hopefully it will work for you. Um, I haven't got it in my other account. Let me just, one second, let me just see if I can get this uh, in my other MT4 that I've got. Got another one set up here for Axie. It should hopefully have more data in it. All right, let's try that in the strategy tester. Uh, There we go. Okay, so um, there's a, I don't know why, but Robo Forex for some reason uh, doesn't want to draw properly. But anyway, uh, we can see there the opening ranges have been drawn. Okay, so uh, this is for Frankfurt, the purple line. So there you have your opening range low and your opening range high, and that is the first five minute candle. And then at 90 minutes, it draws in the opening range high and opening range low. Uh, which is that candle there and obviously where we actually open as the opening range high. So it draws in those opening ranges for you automatically. Let um, me just speed this up and it will do the same thing in uh, New York. There we go. So there's your New York five minute opening range high. So it's that candle there. And then if we go forwards, it will draw in the opening range low, which is the 90 minute low. And that's where that drew that in there. Okay. And again, the high was the same um, in Frankfurt. So the idea behind the opening range high and the opening range low, uh, if we do this on one minute, it will become more clear. Okay. Is that you take an opening range break on a particular time. Now I use the five minute on the one, uh, one minute chart. Uh, so what we're looking for is a break of this opening range. So quite often we will go into an accumulation after the open when the initial volume comes in. And this works on most indices, the DAX, the S&P, the NASDAQ. Uh, and then you're looking for a break of that to enter into a trade. And normally what happens is when we do get that break of range, we get a continuation push. So if we just move forward a little bit in time, there we go. We saw we had the big break there and then price will continue down from there uh, and same thing for a 90 minute opening range uh, this works better in new york uh, but there's your five minute opening range break there and obviously there's the continuation so the idea is when you get the five minute opening range break that is the direction for the start of the session and you can scalp that for however many pips, points, percent, or whatever you want to get. Uh, typically, you would put your stop at the opening range high, and the EA will auto trade this for you if you want it to, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, uh, that will basically, obviously, take the trades and then put the stop there and, and uh, trade for you. So um, so there's that one there. Sorry, I just lost my track on what I was actually going to say. Oh, yeah, it's the 90 minute opening ranges. Um, so if you look at the five minute chart, uh, where we've got the 90 minute, let's just start another one, five minutes. Uh, what you quite often find with the 90 minute opening range is by the time you get the 90 minute opening range put in, you've usually found the high or the low of the day. So if we see the opening range high there, okay, opening range high two of the 90 minutes into the session, that is the high. And you find vast majority of the time price will not return to that level as it did here. So there's your opening range low of the 90 minutes for Frankfurt. And there's New York started to kick in. 
Yeah. And you can see in each session, what tends to happen is uh, when you get your opening range high of 90 minutes put in, price very rarely will break that level after 90 minutes into the session. Again, there 90 minutes into the session, we didn't touch it again. Same here, opening range low, we pushed away. Opening range high of New York, we pushed away. And you very rarely will ever get back to that level. So the reason the opening range high two is important is it tends to give you the direction for the rest of the day. And the rest of the day will either be a trend day or a rotational day or an accumulation day. So that is what those ranges are there for. You can adjust these ranges to be whatever you want. Personally, I use the five minute and the 90 because they give me a clue as to where we're likely to go for the day. And this is particularly true of indices. Never tested it on Forex. Um, typically, I scalp on indices. So, um, But that's basically the idea behind those. And obviously, if you want to change those at any time, you can do. Let me just quickly whiz back uh, and see what happens on that trade. The DAX. Uh, there we go. So on that DAX trade, it automatically got us out with half a percent profit on those uh, four positions. There we go. So there's your profit on those five positions it took. Um, so it took half a percent, or a quarter of a percent profit we had it set to, didn't we? Yeah. So that's that auto exit um, strategy that I was looking at previously. Uh, another thing to just show you while we're in here as well. Um, <clears throat> It will automatically comment on why you got into the trade. So, for example, I took an initial market buy. Yeah. And then the EA auto added for me. And then I took another market buy. The EA auto added for me. I took another market buy. And then there was a market buy that hit its stop loss, which it got me out of. So the reason for your trade is also in there. Very, very handy if you ever want to export your history and then analyze it. Because what it will do is it will show you the comments for each of your trades. And then you will be able to see all the time when I take a uh, pending sell order, they tend to be losers. And it will help you analyze how, um, how good you are with each individual type of entry that you, that you take. Um, okay, so that was the uh, draw sessions opening and opening ranges. Okay, so those are those settings there. Draw recent ranges. Um, what this will do is it will draw what it says, the last five candle range, the last 15, the last 30, and the last 60 candle ranges. So if I turn those on for you now, uh, let's just use for the moment, let's use the last five and say the last 30. Okay. Uh, what you will see it do is automatically draw in on the chart levels. Okay. So this here, and there will be a line there, is the last five candle high and the last five candle low. And this is the last 30 candle high and the last 30 candle low, which is the same. OK, so it goes back 30 candles and it goes back five candles. These will dynamically adjust. The idea behind these lines is to help you trade range breakouts, which we've got right now. So you see a range breakout, you hit the buy button and you get into a position. And I think I've got auto scaling in turned on very aggressively. So it's probably going to get me into another one in a sec. Um, but range breakouts basically are accumulations. So uh, this is actually quite nice to demonstrate in the strategy tester as well, because you can see uh, them working more effectively in there. Uh, let me just show you those settings in the strategy tester. Uh, so we use the five and uh, let's just use the 15 for the minute um so what you'll see this do is it will uh, and obviously this is 15 candles not 15 minutes um so if you you can adjust these the reason i've chosen 5 15 30 and 60 is because most people tend to trade and scalp uh on the five minute or the one minute charts therefore it's giving you the option for the last 5 15 30 and 60 minute range on a one minute chart, uh, but you can use it on any time frame. So you can see we've got the lines drawn in here. We've got the red line and, and the green line, which signify the high and the low. Uh, and as we go through, those lines will automatically redraw. Okay. And the idea being here, this is a bit quick. 
what you're looking for is exactly what we've got here, a contraction in price. You can see the lines are very, very narrow and close together. So what this is indicating is that we've had a movement and we're now in an accumulation. Accumulations form before the next breakout in either direction. So when we see those lines gradually getting closer and closer and closer together, when we get a break of them, it's usually an indication that we've accumulated and this is now the next move in our chosen direction. So whichever way this breaks out will likely be a momentum move for X number of candles, in this case up. So there was the range and you see it's popped up there. Whoops, just move that back down again. Um, and that's what those are for. So you can adjust those and fine tune them f if you want to use range breakouts. Um, and they're really, really good to use in conjunction with what you can see on the chart here, which is the candlestick pattern uh, identification. So when you get a bullish engulfing or a strong closed candle that breaks out of a range like that one there, um, that will be an indication that obviously price is potentially going to move strongly in one direction or the other. So there, for example, you would have had a five minute range drawn. You got a strong closed candle, which broke out of that range. We went into accumulation and started to drop. So that is your trade entry, the strong close out of the five minute range or five candle range or whatever this one is. In this case, this is 15 candles, I think. Um, depending on the time frame, obviously, that you're trading. Okay, so it's configurable to do whatever you want. And again, it's there as an option if you want to uh, trade range breaks. Uh, so where are we now? Uh, recent ranges we've got covered. We've drawn those in. Uh, candlestick patterns. Okay, so these are uh, candlestick. This is a candlestick pattern recognition system, basically. Um, if what happens is with candlestick pattern recognition is it will only kick in from your first session open. So the Frankfurt session open I have at 10 o'clock, which is 8 a.m. UK time. Uh, most brokers use UTC plus two. Um, so UTC is eight o'clock in the UK is, is UK time. So most brokers you will find will be using 10 o'clock candle for Frankfurt open and 4.30 candle, which is 2.30 for the New York open uh, in America. So what happens is with this uh, candlestick recognition, it will only draw these in from that open. So if you want to, um, you can adjust that to be the start of your broker's day and it will start drawing those candlestick patterns in from them, obviously. But you would normally only really use price action um, during uh high volatility times which is usually at the open and the first sort of hour of the day and then we go into a range or a contraction a lot of the time and then again for the next open of New York. So price action candlesticks you can use an EMA filter as well for these so typically a lot of people me included will use two moving averages on their chart when they are scalping. I tend to use the 20 and the 50 and I use EMAs as most people do. EMAs are better to use uh, for short time frames because they are just based on the most recent price action, their exponential moving average rather than simple. So they uh, are just based on the ATR as well, on the m actual movement that you're getting. So they're a little bit more accurate. Uh, let me just change that one to red so we can distinguish between the two. Um, so there's my 20, there's my 50. So if I set my filter here for candlestick patterns to true, which is as default, and I use the 50 EMA, it will only show me candlestick patterns which are bullish when we are above the 50. Okay, so it's only going to show me bullish candlestick patterns. So it won't show me a bearish strong close, which we're potentially getting now because we're above the 50. So idea being is you want to be trading with the trend when you're scalping or you're trading low time frames. So you would use either the 50 or the 20. Um, in fact, I've got those the wrong way around, I think, haven't I? Yeah, that's the 20 I've made red. <laughs> so uh, this just for me, I use uh, green and red for the 50. So uh, the 50 is the one that's in use at the moment. Um, so you would only want to trade short, obviously, if we are below either the 20 or the 50, depending on what you want. You could use the 200 as well if you wanted to or any EMA that you like. Uh, but idea being is I only want to see candlestick patterns in line with the direction that I want to trend uh, trade rather than 
candlestick patterns against me. Now, you may not want to have that set on um, because you might want to see candlestick patterns that are against you because those are potentially exit signals. When we get long wet candles and strong closes in the opposite direction to what we're trading, it's sign of strength coming through and we may want to exit our positions. So you can have that set to true or false. If you turn it off, it will show you every single one. Just to quickly run through um, what the candlestick patterns are. Um, you may or may not be familiar with them, but a strong close candle is a candle that closes very close to its high. OK, so for in a in a bullish strong close and it will put the SC underneath that candle. So this candle pushed up and the close of the candle was very close to the high of the candle. OK, and you have a have settings here that you can alter with these. So your strong close candle minimum in points will be the total size of your candle and the strong close wick maximum length as a percentage of the candle will be what's left at the top. So if you were to set that to 50, for example, that wick at the top of the candle could be halfway through the candle. The idea of a strong close, though, is we want to close as close to the top of that candle as possible. So 20% of the candle is really what I found to be the optimal on that one. The candle length will vary depending on what you are trading. So this is to do with the amount of points that a particular um, instrument will move in one candle. Now, obviously, if you're going to go on to bigger time frames, your candles are going to move more points. On tiny time frames, they're not going to move an awful lot. So in this case, on the DAX, the candle there, which was a strong close, was 299 points. If I move over onto the New Zealand dollar yen and measure that candle, that was only 43 points. So that wouldn't give you a signal if you had that set to less than 20. So as default, um, so less than uh, 40 rather. So as default, I've set them fairly small, but you may want to adjust these um, so that it only shows you really decent sized candles because strong closed candles, we are looking for really to be propulsion candles, i.e. an accumulation and a break out of accumulation, which tends to end in a pullback and push. Yeah. So that is a strong closed candle out of an accumulation. And again, if you'd had your range bars drawn in there, you would have seen that range break and then retest of the range and off we go. Um, again, that was counter trend, so you probably wouldn't have taken that one, but um, but that's what that basically does. Two inside bar signals. Um, so an inside bar signal, these are a little bit rarer, but what an inside bar signal is, is a push in one direction. And then, so this would be a green candle and then a pullback into that candle and it has to close inside the previous candle. So that is a initial propulsion move, typically a strong close candle. It has to be a strong close candle and then a pullback inside. So inside of that bar, this is where we get the two inside bar name from and then a push back up in the direction of your initial move. So this is the second inside bar. Typically, when you get a push and a pullback and then a push, it tends to be followed by a continuation move. So this is a very fast move like that, where what we're seeing is big price movement coming in, a pullback from the sellers and then buyers stepping in and rejecting those sellers, absorbing them and pushing forwards. So the two inside bar pattern is uh, is a really nice, uh, strong pattern a lot of the times. And again, you can fine tune uh, that to say what size your initial body has to be of um, that first candle. So typically you would want it to be a big bodied, strong candle, strong closed candle. OK, so if you the smaller you set that, the bigger these wicks are potentially going to be and the smaller the candles will be. So they tend to work best with large bodies. Um, and this these um, settings that I've got here are all kind of slightly fine tuned for the DAX, um, but they will work on most indices as well. But again, you can adjust these as you see fit. Long wick signals, pretty straightforward. Uh, long wick is like that. A shooting star hammer type setup uh, where we have a long wick on the candle. And again, you can alter the settings on this one. So the tail length as a percentage of the candle. So obviously here we've got the body there and that is the wick that is more than 50% of the entire 
candle height so that is that setting there and then the long wick uh, candle size so that is the entire size of the candle and the reason that setting is there is to stop you getting signals on tiny little spinning tops like that now you may want to have them on tiny little spinning tops like that which is fine so you would just set your minimum candle length to be small but what i'm looking for when i'm looking for these sort of candlestick patterns is a strong move in one direction followed by a long wick to the downside and kind of a hammer or a long move to the upside and a shooting star so that is a price action indication of the end of the move and the sellers stepping in and absorbing the buyers positions ready for a move in the opposite direction the other thing to note about this candlestick pattern in particular is it needs to be the high of the last five candles as well so you can see this one here that will have signaled short if you weren't using a moving average filter because it's pushed up by five candles and this is the new high of the last five candles the reason that is in place is to stop you getting signals like that okay so these are useless long wick candles because they are in an accumulation if they do not make a new high or a new low of the last five candles it will not give you a signal because any long wick candles which are in accumulation are just indecision long wick candles at the end of a strong move are signs of absorption and reversal okay so there are rules applied to there as well. Uh, equal highs and equal lows. Very, very self-explanatory. Uh, when we get an equal high or an equal low, um, it will automatically signal. Let's look at this in the strategy test and we'll find some. Uh, let's see if we've got one in here. Is that still running? Uh, let's set it running again. On. Let's try it on one minute. We'll probably find some. So you can see again here it didn't draw any candlestick patterns in because the Frankfurt open hadn't started. Now it starts to draw because we're at the open now. We're looking for price action at um, the open. Uh, let's see if I can find one. There's one. Uh, there's a couple in there. Uh, um, so there's an equal high. Okay, so that one is an equal high because it's matched that high there. Uh, there's an equal high there that's matched that high there. The way the equal high and equal low um, pattern works, the recognition system or the logic behind the pattern is, it will look at the current candle's high and then it will look back five bars and see if it can find an equal high. If it can, it will signal. If it can't, it will look back another five bars and then another five bars. So it will go 15 bars back. So what we're looking for is a recent equal high. In this case, uh, you can see obviously the high put in there was equal to that high there. And basically that is a sign of rejection. So we've pushed up, rejected. We've tried to push up again. We haven't. We've rejected again. We've pushed up and we've had another rejection. After the equal high, you tend to get a strong push. And again, we're scalping. We're looking for very, very small profits in, out, done by the end of that candle. Could have got out at the end of that candle. Um, that equal high, you wouldn't really have taken because it's not really any kind of signal, is it? We're coming out of an accumulation. But that's the logic behind the equal highs. Um, there's more in there that I found. There's an equal high there. Um, there were a couple others I spotted. There's an equal high there. So that one is an equal high of that candle there. So again, we had a move start off of that. So it's just rejection. But again, with equal highs and lows, ideally you would see them come off of a level and put in that nice M formation, which is why it looks back a total of 15 bars. Okay, so that's equal highs and equal lows. Uh, the other candlestick pattern we have is the good old bullish and bearish engulfing. Um, so minimum body size is the only setting you have for that. Um, the bullish and bearish engulfing are pretty straightforward. Um, the candle has to completely engulf the body of the previous candle. So we had a strong close candle down, which was followed by a candle in the opposite direction, which was much larger than the previous candle. That is a bullish engulfing, typically a sign of the buyers or the sellers starting to take control or continuing control yeah so um, got a bullish engulfing there and again 
this is a tiny little bullish engulfing. This is not optimized for this particular. This is for the S&P. So you would probably want to have that being way more. So probably something along the lines of 300 maybe for the S&P. So what you would do is say the minimum body size of the bullish engulfing has got to be 300 points. So you can fine tune these for each individual currency pair. The only way you're really going to know that is by measuring and having a look at each currency pair. See, we've got 28 uh, points on the New Zealand dollar yen. Um, so the setting for the S&P is going to be completely different. Uh, that's all for the candlestick patterns. Um, now we've got auto trading. Now this is um, something you need to use in the tester before you use this in live testing. Uh, auto trading is there to automatically get you in um, two positions based on the criteria that you set. Now, there's m different settings for this, and this is why you see some of these saying buttons and auto, uh, because they apply to both of them. Um, so fixed lots instead of percentage, this only applies to auto trades and will not be used in normal button operation when you're hitting these buttons on a live chart. Um, you can select to use a fixed lot size when you get into trades automatically okay so if it's automatically defaulted to 0 0.01 so if we stick this in the strategy tester um, and ask it to do auto trades um, to see how I've got this set up let me just reset it to defaults um, if I want it to take the Frankfurt initial opening range breakout for me okay it will take that trade and it will base it on the risk that i have set so half a percent in this case so we'll just let this run and we'll show you how this one works so the frankfurt opening ranges will take a trade when we break the low of the five minutes which was there this one didn't work uh so it took that close there because we broke below the low on that strong close candle uh the stop is always put at the opposite range high okay so you can see the lot size it would have got in on that one would have been uh, fairly big because it was a very very tight range 483 so if we look at the result of that trade it took a 0.2 okay if we change that to use fixed lots it will automatically get us in with a 0 0.01 regardless of where the stop loss is placed. So it will take the same trade, but in this case, it will have just used a 0 0.01. Okay, so you can use fixed lots on it if you want to, uh, as opposed to um, a percentage risk. Now you can see in this case, obviously, we got the opening range break uh, very, very quick. Um, now, the, this one works as well on candle close rather than just on breaking that line. So the actual entry on this one would have been somewhere down there if it, uh, if it hadn't have broken there. It will only take one trade at a time. So if we break the opening range low, it will take a short for you. Um, the opening range high is still alive. So if this was to push up and then break the opening range high, it would take a trade opening range high for you and the stop would be put there the idea being is we quite often uh, as in this case we get a false breakout um, unfortunately we got stopped out on this one but this was an incredibly tight range uh, on this particular day um, so if we break back above that level which it's not going to do uh, it would take another trade there um, I'm not sure we got it we haven't got it set up to take the New York opening range breaks no. So again, you've got individuals for New York opening range. Now, opening range breakouts, you would typically take the Frankfurt opening range breakouts on things like the DAX or the FTSE. Uh, you would take New York opening range breakouts on the Dow, the um, S&P or the NASDAQ. But you do get volatility across all indices at all breakouts. So if you look at the S&P here at the Frankfurt open, uh, we didn't get an awful lot of volatility, wherever that was. I just come off the chart because I've stopped it. Uh, we didn't get much volatility at the Frankfurt Open on the S&P. We got some, but not a massive amount, tight range. When you move to the New York opening range, that tends to be, in this case, it was obviously a quiet day, but it tends to be bigger. You get more movement on the American indices during the American session and on the European indices during the European session. So what I would do is I would set this up on the DAX 
and say take the Frankfurt opening range, I would set it up on the Dow or the NASDAQ or the S&P and I would say to take the New York ranges and not the Frankfurt ones. And obviously you can trade opening range uh, breakouts on the second opening range as well. In this case, it's at the one and a half hour point. But if you wanted to take a 15 minute opening range and a five minute opening range break, you could quite easily do that by setting it to 1645. And then it will draw in the opening range. Uh, and let's do it on that one as well. 1015. So it will draw in your opening ranges uh, and take opening ranges. I've no idea if these will work. Uh, we'll be on New York, aren't we? Let's go to New York. Um, so it will take those breakouts on those two for you, depending on what you've set your times to. So there we go. You see that obviously these are very close together because we've said, show me the five minute and the 15 minute opening range. It hasn't moved anything much more in 15 minutes than it did in five. But you'll see probably on New York, we'll get different lines drawn in. There we go. So, oops. So we took the 15, the five minute opening range break on that candle there. Yeah, and we took profit down there. And we've got a sell on the 15 minute opening range taken there with our TP down there. Um, let's see if that one plays out as well. That one didn't play out, that one stopped out. I know it hasn't stopped out because it's the opening range high. Because it's the opening range high two and opening range low two, that particular trade. There we go, and that one TP'd as well. So they, both of those worked that day. Um, so that's basically those settings there. Um, so that's auto trading with fixed lots and auto trading the opening range breakouts. And as I say, you can set two of those a day for, um, you can actually set four. If you wanted to trade four different opening ranges on the Frankfurt, what you would do is you would set um, all these New York ones to also be Frankfurt and you could set one, two, three, four different opening ranges. But you can set these. I've called them Frankfurt and New York because obviously it's designed to trade off of um, specific sessions and opens. But if you decided actually now, oh, I only want to trade the Frankfurt open, but I want four opening ranges drawn, then you would just set those two to be Frankfurt and you would change this to also be 10. Um, I'm not sure why you do that though, but anyway. Uh, so that's the opening range breakouts. Auto trading SC patterns, very straightforward. When we get a strong close, it will automatically take a trade for you. And that trade will be based on the settings that you have set. It will either be trading uh, stop loss fixed or it will be using ATR to get into your positions. So this will work on auto trading. Um, two inside bar patterns, long wick patterns equals and bullish engulfings. OK, um, now I have not done any testing in detail on this as a completely automated system. It's not what it's for. Um, I built this for buttons to get me in and out of trades very quickly, adding to my positions and get me out of positions when I want to. Uh, this will automatically get you in on all of these. Now, if you select every single one of these, obviously it's gonna take an awful lot of trades. Now, the way that auto trading works on these patterns, I will show you in the tester, is, and I'll do this on a 15 minute chart just to so that we can slow it down a little bit and demonstrate it um, it will take a trade uh, only when the high or the low of the candle is pierced okay so it will not use market orders to get you into these positions best practice when you see a candlestick pattern is to place a pending order above or below that pattern so I'm just going to quickly show you in here. So uh, I haven't got anything being drawn here at the minute. Um, so let's say, for example, I wanted to get in on this bullish candle here. Best practice is not to get in immediately. It is to set a pending order. And this is why we have these buttons above the high of that candle, because what you will find sometimes will happen in this case is a prime example big strong close candle yeah immediately set a pending order above that candle what happened price pulled back straight away and went into a two inside bar pattern okay so we haven't triggered that trade now you see this candle come down this may have been a bearish engulfing in the opposite direction which would have been an instant 
loss or instant drawdown or instant stop out for you. By placing your pending order above the higher the candle, you're only getting triggered when this candlestick pattern is being confirmed, i.e. we are definitely still moving up and it will grab you and take you along the way as momentum pushes in your direction. So as we've got a strong close going in here, I would be saying, right, let's get me into this trade. Uh, I'm going to put a stop under the low of the last candle and hit me if we get in above the high of that candle. Uh, this is obviously turned off at the minute. Um, so that is basically where it would place my pending order. Okay, so that's what happens with the um, automated trading as well. So if we just get to a point on the 15 minute chart where we can see it starting to take some trades. Okay, uh, let's see if we can get one there. So we got a pending order there. I've got a very small profit target obviously set up on this. Um, so we had that strong close. Yeah, and you see it placed a pending order at the low of that candle. That pending order triggered when not on that candle, but on the candle where price pushed through and broke that low. And then we TP'd there. So I think we've got a quarter of a percent target set up on this as an auto exit. So um, it got out very, very, very quickly on the trade. And obviously this is scalping, but this is on M15. So a little bit, a um, little bit conservative for an M15 chart. But that's basically how it works with all candlestick patterns. So a strong closed candle on the open of the next candle, it will place your pending order at the low of that strong close and it will not trigger until price has pushed through and we've got a confirmation so if price pushes back against you you would then normally in if you were trading menu you'd hit the cancel button say no nah, don't like it the ea does the same thing if price pushes back in the opposite direction it will cancel that pending order for you and it will cancel it after a certain amount of minutes Okay, and it's set as default to 30 minutes. It will automatically cancel off pending orders. Uh, this is uh, 30 minutes or five minutes or whatever it is from the opening candle after the pattern has formed. So it's from there onwards. Okay, so set that to whatever you want. But basically, it's there as a if I get a pattern and it goes like that then just get rid of that order because what we don't want is to leave it in the market and then tomorrow price does that and then that and grabs us when we don't want to be getting in. So it's designed just to cancel those orders off automatically for you. Um, if we see if we can see it doing that. Um, it's probably just going to get into all of these. Uh, see if we can see it cancel an order off. It's triggering them all and taking profit on them all. That's a problem. Yeah, there you go. So there's one that's cancelled. So we had uh, an order enter, entered there. Uh, and then, because we, I'm not quite sure what the candlestick pattern was there, but we had uh, an order entered there and on that long wick. Uh, and it was cancelled off 30 minutes later. It was on a 15 minute chart. So that's basically what it would do. That long wick, I wanted to get in short. Price pushed against me. So it said, no trade, cancel the order. Okay, so that's automatic. And that's based off of that um, setting there. Um, <clears throat> so you can auto trade individual patterns. If you love trading bullish engulfing, bearish engulfings, just use that. If you like trading hammers and shooting stars, just use that or use bullish engulfing. Use any combination you like of these and obviously set up the candlestick patterns for whichever you want. You have to have drawing turned on for the pattern for auto trading to work. And it says that requires drawing uh, of each. If I just move that across, you'll really be able to read what it says. Um, of each to be turned on. Okay, so you've got to have the drawing on because the EA auto trading only works if the pattern is drawn on the uh, on the chart. Um, Last thing you got down here, obviously this magic number will be up at the top in your miscellaneous settings on your version. This is development version I've got. Um, stop trading at daily target, auto trading only. If you set that to true um, for your auto trading, uh, it will get you out and stop trading when you hit a daily target. So this is really handy to use if you wanted to use auto trading uh, for price action and you wanted to watch what was going on, have the EA automatically get you in and you be sitting here 
on these buttons, if it got to a point where it got into one beautiful trade, and I've had this happen to me many, many times, uh, we got a lovely bullish engulfing. I had it set to scale in three or four times, and it basically went up to there, hit target, and banked 2.5% on that one trade. Uh, what I will have it do is automatically stop trading for me at my target. So if you wanted to just make 1% a day, 20% a month using this, yeah, um, you would say, right, if you make 1% on your first trade today at the Frankfurt Open, I'm done. That's it. I'm happy. And it won't trade anymore for you. So I would encourage this to be used if you're using auto trading because one of the biggest problems people have me included in this is over trading you have a great day you have three or four trades at the open where they just go your direction you bank three or four percent and you're like today's going to be an awesome day what you end up doing is giving back that three or four percent and then losing one or two percent and that sends you full tilt and you go crazy and start over leveraging this is designed to stop that happening. If you want to make 1% a day and you're happy to make 1% a day, this EA will keep trading and taking opportunities for you all day long until that target is hit. And if you're going to have a day where it's going to be a down day, you're going to have a down day. But if you get that target hit, it will stop the trading for you. Um, so we can see, we'll probably see that in action. Um, I'm not sure the best way to set this up. I want to get it in and out fast. So... Uh, let's get it to scale in super quick um, on the S&P. Let's go 50. Uh, and we will ask it, I'm going to turn the buttons off in here as well. Uh, we'll ask it just to get us in on every everything. Just get us in every time you see something bullish or bearish. Uh, and we'll use the 20 as a filter. And we'll use 0.5s fixed. Uh, okay, so let's see if this uh, gets us in and out uh, with 1% target. Um, to see if I've got exit strategies. So I'm going to target 0.25% profit on each of my trades. Uh, let's see what this does. And I've, I've no idea what this is going to do, but I just wanted to try and demonstrate the point of um, it stopping trading when you bank some cash okay so we've done some trades there uh, they were losers I've no idea what these whether you say this is good bad or indifferent it seems to have stopped trading uh, let's have a look I've probably got this set actually way too tight. It's probably actually not going to be able to make profit um, because the settings are too tight. But obviously, you can play around with these settings. Uh, are we taking opening range breaks as well? can't remember. I think I've got my stops way too tight on this. I don't think it's actually the trades are actually getting an opportunity to work out. Uh, but anyway, that's what it does. <laughs> It looks like it has maybe stopped trading. I can't see if there's any candlestick patterns coming in. So we'll yeah, we, so we stopped trading basically. Um, there was no no nothing being drawn, no auto trading happening because we'd obviously hit the one percent target for that day. So that's basically what that setting does. Um, so it only applies to auto trading. It won't apply to your buttons. If you want to carry on taking trades on buttons, it will do. Um, I've got a trade running. At the moment, by the looks of things, no, I haven't got buy stops. Uh, so, um, so yeah, so that's an overview of all the settings, uh, everything that it does. Uh, at present, this is obviously version one. Um, I will probably adapt it and add to it or change things depending on feedback. But that's the the overview of the settings and uh, how it's designed to be used. So, from a strategy perspective. When I'm scalping, um, what I do is uh, when I'm taking my trades, I will get into positions when I get um, candlestick 
patterns basically so when we get a strong close candle uh, I will take a long and obviously scale into that long until I see some signs of bearishness and then I will get out of those positions um, I've just taken a trade there for no reason whatsoever obviously because there's no pattern but just to demonstrate a point um, and then what I will tend to do is obviously monitor how the trade is going and the idea being is I've got into a position um, let me just cancel that one I've got it wrong uh, I will get into a position and I will say I want to put a buy stop above that candle as well. So I've got in long. If we break high, I'm going to get into another position there. Uh, and then it's also going to auto scale in for me. So if this position goes my way, brilliant. I'm going to make some money. If it starts to go against me and looks like it's coming down, um, then I will quickly get out of it, usually before it hits my stop loss. So if that's looking bearish like it is at the minute, I'll probably say get out of it. Don't like it. Um, and then obviously if price moves against me, no problem. Um, I've basically reduced my loss by getting out quickly. And that's the whole point of these buttons. But you can trade it, uh, trade with the EA. Um, a lot of the time what I do is I look for trend pullbacks. So here, for example, when we pulled back into the 50 and got a nice long wick candle, I would go in short, but I would set a pending order under that low there. Yeah, when I saw that candle close and when I got gathered up on it, add into the position and then get out somewhere down there quick in and out with a tight stop. That's the idea behind it. If you want to get leave your trades to breathe a lot longer, you can obviously have much wider stops and not use candle stops. You can use pip amount stops. So if this is pushing down hard and again, you could use an RSI or something if you wanted to. But um, from a moving average point of view, when we get pullbacks into moving averages and we start to get bearish price action, uh, that typically is the direction you want to be trading. So I would get in with sells and then if price pushes up against me, I could say get in with a sell stop and add to the position, bring my average up and then hopefully get that move down. And if it pushes against me after I've taken another position, close out the position and get out quick. So best practice is always, if possible, to use buy stops and sell stops rather than market orders whenever you're trading, um, whenever you're scalping, really. Uh, but any time frame, you know, if you're thinking, right, I want to take a long here, don't go long here. Go long there. Yeah. So go buy stop last. OK. Or buy stop this candle. Yeah. So if this now continues to push down against me, I'm not in a trade. I'm not going to make a loss. If you hit that button now and this thing pushes down against you, you're immediately going to go into drawdown. But what I'm asking for by using these pending orders, and these are the buttons I use all the time, the buy stop last and the buy stop, if obviously if I'm mean reversion trading, um, is I'm trying to get in when price is moving in my direction, when I've got momentum. So if we're looking to take a short trade as price is pushing up, I will put pending orders underneath the lows of the candles. Yeah. And then as soon as we get down there, I would have triggered into that trade. These would have never have got triggered. So I would cancel off those pendings. That trade I got into and then price starts to move in my direction. Stop above the high, pushes up, bearish, may have taken another trade, may not have. Push down, enter another position, out or cancel it as it pushes up. Up to you. But by using these pending orders, what you're going to find is that you will not get into so many trades and get stopped out so quickly. Yeah, because now this buy stop is sitting there. I'm not in that position yet. Now I am because we've got bullish price action. Well, obviously, bear in mind, I'm trading the one minute chart. So this is just chop I'm trading at the minute. Um, normally, I would be on M5 most of the time. Um, but as you can see, I got into an initial position after that strong push down because I'm expecting it to mean revert back to the moving average. Uh, got into another position because it broke above that high. And now I've got an average here so I can hover over the close button. If this pushes down and looks bearish and it gets down to something like that and get out really, really quick. If it continues going in my way, it's going to get me into another buy, which it just has there. My average is now moving up and it only entered there because it pushed above the high of that candle. So I'm looking for these highs to get invalidated, to get into positions long. Um, and that's basically the way to um, to trade. Uh, 113. And there's stop loss. What's that from? Because uh, I've probably, I think I've got other trades on. Anyway, let me just close all those out. Close all those pendings. Um, so yeah, so those are the ones that I would you would be better off using. Now, if you're thinking it's going to go short now because we've pulled back to the moving average and we're going to continue on our bear run today, you would go, right, have a sell stop under that last candle. 
So if we now get bearish price action, i.e. a rejection of the 20 moving average, get me in when we start moving in that direction. Don't get in just because we've hit the moving average. Get in when price has confirmed, yes, we are actually going to go down. Those pending stops. Now, if price pushes up with me up to the 50, what I would do is I would cancel that. We'll see what happens with this candlestick. But um, So if this turns out to be an inside bar and we push higher, I will cancel that pending order off and then place a new pending order under the low of that candle that is just been painted as uh, bullish. And I would just basically be trailing my stop up. So if you think as price moves up, yeah, you're just trailing your order up under price, waiting for that reversion to happen. When that reversion happens, you usually get a follow through of a couple of candles. And that's where you're out. And that's why these buttons are much more used personally by me than those because I'm getting in when price is confirmed. See, at the moment, I'm not in that order because the pending order goes below the low, below the low of that candle. We didn't do it, did we? We got an inside bar and price is pushing up. So I'm not going to get in because price is not going in the direction I wanted to at the moment. It's a good chance we may push up and retest the 50 or possibly with 200, I'd imagine, or the 100 there um, in this particular case. So right now I can cancel that pending order and go with a sell stop underneath this candle. Yeah, and it's placed it 20 uh, points below the low of this candle, which is what we got set in here. Yeah, so I'm sitting waiting for price to make an, make up its mind. Now, if it goes into an accumulation here, I'll just sit there and wait for it to accumulate. It can do what it likes. Uh, when it breaks, we get a strong close in one direction. Then I'm going to get gathered along the way. And if, if this turns into one of those massive big candles, out straight away. Or add to the position and hold it. Obviously, it's entirely up to you. Um, okay, so that's it for the settings and basically how I trade with it. I mean, typically I'm on M5 and I'm playing these pullbacks to moving averages. Yeah, uh, in expected direction. This is the DAX. I traded this this morning. Didn't work. Um, I was trying to get the gap fill. Uh, didn't quite get it, unfortunately. But um, Right, so uh, open to questions now for anybody that's got them. Uh, I'll go through your comments. Um uh, break even stop is spread and commissions. No, break even is break even at entry. Uh, it doesn't take into account your commissions or your spreads. It's just moving your stop to break even, basically. Uh, if you adjust the settings once the trade is opened, it uh, will it work or is it only for new trades? Like if you add or change the trailing stop method. So, um, if you open up the EA uh, and enter any changes in here, that's no problem at all. Basically, the magic number is what is being used. So if we look at those trades I've taken here and I hover over these, you see there it says placed by expert ID 100. OK, so it, the EA knows that this was an order that was placed by the EA. OK, and it will monitor and manage anything it's got the magic number on. All right. So you can come in here and you can make as many changes as you like. As long as you don't change this magic number, it will manage the positions on here. If you enter manual trades, i.e. if you go up here and press buy, that is not going to be taken by the EA. It says placed manually. OK, it will not manage this trade. This is nothing to do with the EA. You will have to manage this manually. But why would you ever use those buttons? You got buttons here. Use those. These are faster execution, automatically calculate your lot size, and you can adjust them on the fly, which is exactly why I built the thing, because this is something that is sadly lacking in MT4 and MT5. There is no fast order execution system. I want to get out, close it, bang, done. That's what it's for. Um, so, yeah, it will only, and it will obviously manage them. So if you come in here and say, um, I didn't have add to, I didn't have scaling in on, for example, um, and I've taken a position, I've taken two manual positions with the buy buttons here. Um, and now I actually think this is going my way. I want to scale into this automatically. So you can come in here and say, yes, please scale me in automatically. And what it will do is it will then start scaling in for you because it's managing your positions by, taken by the EA. Yeah. 
So you can make as many adjustments as you like in here. You can say, right, this looks to be going my way. Um, every time I get a pullback and we get a bullish engulfing in line with the uh, 20 moving average, please get me in automatically. And it will do that for you. Yeah. So you can make, make adjustments as you're using it. Obviously, if you open a new pair and you want to start trading CAD Yen, for example, and put the EA onto CAD Yen, you need to give this a new magic number so that it can now distinguish any trades taken on here as being taken by the EA with a different magic number. So now we have this trade taken. Uh, oh, that was manual. <laughs> this one taken by expert ID 200. Yeah, the CAD Yen. So that's that trade there. So this will manage all trades with the magic number of 200 and add to all trades with the magic number of 200. Uh, on your other chart, it will be trading with 100. So if I take that by there, you see that one is 200. That one is 100. Yeah. Uh, turn off auto scroll. It will keep you from going back too far. Yeah. Okay. That was to do with the strategy testing. Um, five minute and 90 minute work also for foreign exchange and gold. I don't know. Test it. Um, you do get movement on FX. Yeah. So um, well, let's test it. Let's go into FX and pick an FX pair. Let's just pick pound US dollar and we'll look at what happens to the pound US dollar at the Frankfurt Open. Just reset it. So there's your Frankfurt Open. Yeah, there's your movement. There's your New York Open. And there's your movement. So I don't know. You'll need to test this, but... Um, I, I built this for indices scalping. Indices, in my opinion, are the best thing to scalp. And there's two reasons for that. First, you have uh, typically a strong directional bias for the day. Indices will tend to go into either a rotation day or a trend day. When you get that opening range of five minutes and opening range of 90 minutes broken, you tend to get a continuation on indices. And it happened, obviously, on the pound US dollar here as well. Um, so they're much easier to trade um, and you have a time where you know they're going to come alive. Indices come alive. The DAX comes alive at Frankfurt Open at 8 in the morning. It does this and then it goes bang. Yeah, uh, same with the FTSE. The S&P, the Dow and the NASDAQ at the New York Open go crazy. Yeah. Uh, you can see that if you've been in the live runs, which most of you have, uh, you can see that happening over and over again. Uh, if we have a look at the DAX uh, this morning, yeah. So this was pre-market. This was the open. Bang, look at that massive propulsion candle. And all of a sudden you've got loads and loads of volume coming in. Yeah, and that doesn't happen as much in FX pairs. The other reason it's good to trade um, uh, indices is, first of all, spread. Let me find a spread meter. I must have one in here somewhere. I've got more uh, indicators than indicator shop. There we go, spread. Okay, so I've got one point spread on uh, the DAX. So if we go down to M1, um, put my ask line on. I mean, you, can, you can't see it. You can't see the spread. It's that tight. Yeah. Uh, if we look at the spread on something like the pound New Zealand. Uh, these are all in the wrong order because this is different. It's a demo account. You've got six points, five or six point spreads. Much, much, much bigger. Um, that's not. I've got the arse line set to none. Yeah, there we go. So there's your spread. Yeah, you see how big that spread is? It's huge. Look at the DAX. You can't even see it. It's that small, the spread. Yeah, virtually nothing. And that's the same with all indices. So you'll find you have very, very high spread. So when you, if, if you want to scalp with this, obviously you can trade with this tool on any time frame. If you want to trade M15 super slow, do it. No problem. Obviously then spread is much less important. 
Uh, M5 and M1 is typically where people tend to sit when they're scalping, but M15 just as equally, you know, if you were taking pullbacks, you've got a lovely bearish engulfing there, which you would have got a BE signal on. Uh, you would have put a pending stop there and you'd have been gathered up on it there and you'd still be in the thing. It's never given you a reason to get out. We had two inside bars. Perfect inside bar there, look. Two inside bar pattern. Push up, push down. Off of that inside bar, break down. Perfect. So yeah, if you want higher time frames, obviously price action at higher time frames is going to be much, much, much better. Much less opportunities, much slower. People scalping want to be in and out and done in a session. My goal is at the open, I want to trade the opening range break and I want to trade the initial 15 to 30 minutes of the open and I want to hit my target and go, uh, that's it, I'm done for the day. That's why we trade small time frames, and that's why this is here so that we can try and get in and out and be done with our 1% or whatever it is very, very, very quickly. Um, so yeah, it, it, that's why I, I would use um, indices rather than FX. But yes, you can. You can trade it. Um, 590 minute work on Forex and Gold. Yeah, we just covered that one. If trades close in profit already, just like now, uh, where we can see how much we banked so far in percent. Um, you can't. You would look in your P and L down here. Um, so there's no there's no targets as such. Uh, I mean, you'll keep a manual track of it. Really, uh, there's no display for what you've banked with the EA um, because you could be trading with other EAs. You could be trading manually. Uh, so it just keeps track of your current trade. The idea being, again, I keep coming back to this. Um, the reason this whole thing triggers at the open of Frankfurt, we don't see any candlestick patterns before then, is most traders will start trading at the Frankfurt open because this is when it comes alive. You should be able to get your target hit at Frankfurt open or within a couple of trades of the Frankfurt open. If you have a bad day and you go down, then yeah, you go on to trade the New York open. Or if you're in New York, you won't even see the Frankfurt open. You'll just trade the New York open. Yeah closed save that um so yeah it's it doesn't keep a track of uh, of ongoing statistics again anything you'd like to see put it in the telegram group uh, and obviously we can adapt and evolve the the ea as we go um so you can see obviously when i hit the close trade buttons there hasn't closed this trade out because this trade was taken manually wasn't taken by the ea so i've got to close that one out myself um so the auto trade and scalping features would be more suitable to be used on indices or they can be used on FX pairs too. Just covered that. Uh, please do one back test on any Forex pair M5 or M15. Uh, so let's you. I've just kind of done that, haven't I, in here? It's kind of running now. So I'm not quite sure what you want to see in here. Um, but you can see this is not drawing candlestick patterns. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the reason being is, I guess, we've got this set. Uh, let's see what we've got this set to do. Uh, let's turn the EMA filter. Let's just reset all this to defaults. Um, so we may need to change the uh, size of these candlesticks. So let's go with, uh, I don't know, let's just put everything down to fives. So this is on M15. So there's your strong closes. Okay. Now, obviously, uh, right. So this is something that we may need to adjust. Um, the offset of this is done on points. And this works perfectly on indices. Ah, this might be why some people have said they're not seeing the candlestick patterns drawn. You are. It's just they're painted a long way away. Um, so I might have to put an offset in there. Um because this is set to offset of about 40, yeah, 45 pips, um, which on an indice is absolutely fine. On Forex, that's why you're not seeing the candlestick patterns, because they're being drawn off the chart. Okay, I will get that fixed. I'm making a note of that, and I'll roll that out as an update today. Um, so the offset, basically, is something that um, needs to be tweaked. But yeah, so it works fine. Obviously, candlestick patterns 
will be drawn as normal. Uh, obviously, you need to tweak the settings for the individual pair you're on based on how much the candles tend to move um, in the in the settings. But you'll probably find actually those are okay settings. Um, might need to tweak them a little bit for something like the pound US. Um, yeah, they'd, they'd need to be tweaked for the pound US. You're not really getting many signals off of that. Um, and something that's really useful to do with this um, from a uh, strategy testing perspective is um, to run this in the strategy tester for a long period of time and see all those opening ranges drawn in and see what happens after those opening ranges and see what sort of price movement you get. Because you'll find those opening ranges, especially the one and a half hour opening ranges for the session, tends to be the higher the day or the lower the day already put in. Um, so those are good ones to uh, to go and back test and just visually look at. I didn't cover back testing in the EA either, did I? Um, so let's quickly do that. Set that to true. Um, stop loss four hundred. That probably want to be something like a hundred, two hundred, maybe for uh, the pound us dollar okay so i've asked it to, to turn the buttons on okay so now in here i can just buy close sell stop sell again modify my tps modify my stop losses close yeah so you can use this for trading in here obviously this the trouble with this is obviously the speed to, the speed of the tester is notoriously super super fast or snail <laughs> and there's no real um this scale should be slow to fast not fast and not as fast and these don't really do anything not great but the point is you can trade in here um and what you would probably want to do is have it set on 31 um because what you're seeing here is 15 minutes playing out probably in about 20 seconds so you can get a lot of price action um practice in yeah hit a sell there um move your tps and stop losses the tps and stop losses are way too big on this i've got it set to like hundreds it should be uh much much less but for example let's not use pip amount let's use the last candle so let's put a sell stop here and stop above the last candle obviously i've got an offset of 10 set on this i've got the offset set way too high again so you would want to go in here and change the offsets for the pending orders and all that sort of stuff so you need to do all of that um uh, as well so but play around but you can you know you can you can practice in here and this is one of the other great things about this is you can come in here and you can practice your your scalping your trading your pullbacks uh, rsi extensions yeah so if you want to just trade when you get rsi extensions and go for longs when you see bullish engulfing candles like that do it yeah that's the open take it yeah so you can you can practice all your strategies in here and say oh, i don't like the look of this it's going up get out yeah play with it um so the auto trading scalping just covered that one um when i use a buy stop or a sell stop the tp normally is two to one um or can be a reversal candle um so when you use a buy stop or a sell stop and you want to use two to one you very, very simply, let me just get rid of that, is that, yeah, so that's two to one. So if I sell now, I've got a two to one risk reward. I've got a 400 uh, point stop and 800 pip TP. That's two to one. Three to one. That's three to one. And that's the other nice thing about this. If your, over, your outlook on the trade that you've taken changes and you think, actually, I don't think we're going to break below that low. So uh, I don't think we're going to get more than 400 out of this. Change it. Go for that low. And then say, right, actually, I really don't like the look of this one. Uh, I'm just going to reduce my risk on it because I don't fancy it. Do it. And that's the beauty of these buttons is you can adjust on the fly. If you take a trade and you suddenly go, actually, no, that doesn't look right. Change it. And you do it very, very quickly. Obviously, you can drag and drop. You can, you know, you can do all of this like that. 
once you've taken a trade. Um, but if you've taken m multiple positions because uh, you've got a, um, a scaling set, you can't adjust all of these very, very quickly. Whereas if this suddenly puts in a whacking great bear candle down to there now, I'm going to hit that button and go, no, 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 don't get me out. Um, and I've did I've done this multiple times. You get news come out, especially at the moment with what's happening in Ukraine. You get news come out and you're short and all of a sudden you get a whacking great bear candle and you go one and a half percent into profit. There's a good chance that's going to push, isn't it? Don't get out at your initial TP. Modify your TP and modify your stop. Drag your stops down and push your TPs away from you. Let your winners run and scale into your winners and drag your stops down to protect your positions. So if you get one of these, here's a prime example. Yeah, you get in there on that entry, uh, pending order under there, under that low. You get in there, and then the next candle is a whacking great one like that, and you had a TP here. You go, no, 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 this thing looks like it's going. I'm going to move my TP down. So you just literally hit that button, adjust your TP down, and then hit your stops and modify your stops and pull your stops. So you're basically bracketing price as it's moving and pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling you can push these buttons to basically uh, modify your position in the market very very quickly which is what i do a lot of the time if something's going my way and i think it looks really really good i.e i've suddenly seen actually we double bottom bounce that looks even better than i thought i might actually go for 800 on this one i'll do it and i can do it that quick and i might think right i'm well into profit on this let's get all of my additional positions added in with 1% risk, not half a percent risk. Let's really scale into this one hard. Obviously, that will bring your average up quicker, but you can do it. And you haven't got to think about, right, what lot size? I've gone in with 1.12. Um, so if I put a stop there, uh, how much is that going to be? You don't need to worry about it. Just hit that, hit that, and it's done. In, out, sorted. Um, what's the number of system uh, that can use the product key? Uh, so this is exactly the same as uh, anything on the marketplace. You get 10 activations, which is 10 PCs or 10 VPSs. If you wanted to put the, I mean, I, I have not, and I will stress this, I have not gone into the strategy tester and asked this to auto trade for me, optimized it and tried to find a way to make this make money for me on autopilot. Yeah. That's not what it's for, uh, and that's not what I'm using it for. The auto trading facility, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find a successful strategy with this. You will need to play around with your TPs, your stop losses, your targets, your trails, your scaling in, your risk. You'll need to play around with lots of settings in the strategy tester and see if you can get every single strong close candle uh, to scale in and exit at a percentage profit for you and then close everything out at a percentage profit a day and keep doing that. I'm sure there is a setting and a set file out there to do it. I haven't had time to look into it. But um, the way that I use this personally is to say, right, um, I want to get in on any bullish or bearish engulfings in line with this. Because what I see right now on my chart is today we are likely to have a strong trending down day. So the next bearish engulfing you find for me in line with the 50 moving average get me in automatically. I haven't got to worry about it. Yeah. And if that bearish engulfing works and we push 200 pips in my direction, scale me in a couple of times. And then I'll be looking at this and suddenly go, oh, wow. 10 minutes after it took the first trade, I'm sitting at 1.2%. I'll have that close yeah so that's what the auto trading is designed to do it's not designed to be one of the eas where you will stick it on a vps and just let the thing go it may well work that way um and again if we can find set files i will share them and everybody who's got it if we find set files let's share them and let's back test them um but the purpose of it is to use these buttons to get you in and out quickly in the market in the direction that we're looking to go yeah so at the moment this is trending lovely between the 50 and the 20 so i'm more than happy to get in uh, with a sell stop on any short so if we break down below the low of this candle get me in if we continue to push up i'll keep putting in sell stops and getting in okay so that's it 
that's all the settings done. Anybody got any other questions? Um, you've asked questions uh, which I've answered. So hopefully I've answered all those questions. If you have any more questions, come into the Telegram group. Um, the Telegram group, I will stick a quick link in the chat now. So if you can see the chat on this replay, because this is a live replay, um, there's a link just gone in the chat now to the Telegram group. Come in the Telegram group, ask questions. If there's features that you would like to see changed, features that you think uh, could be improved or added, let me know. Uh, and obviously, I'm happy to develop it. But uh, this does everything that I need it to do right now. Um, and it works for me. And if it doesn't work for you, obviously, we, we can adjust and add as necessary. But... Um, Obviously, you can go and get this on the MQL5 Marketplace now. Um, and uh, I'm writing up the manual, the full manual for it, which will be published uh, possibly today, if not tomorrow. OK, um, so, yeah, hopefully that was uh, useful. Uh, I think I've covered everything I needed to cover in there. And I will get that um, offset for the signals adjusted uh, and I'll get a release pushed out for that. So obviously, when you're using FX pairs, um, with it, um, you're getting those signals drawn closer to the candles. Um, I'll decide whether or not to use, um, I might use an ATR offset actually, because an ATR offset is automatically going to position these uh, based on movement um, and candlestick size. So that will auto adjust for everything then, won't it? But I'll think about that and get that rolled out as a release. Um, just close it out. Okay, so that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you want the EA, obviously it's on the marketplace um, and it's the price action toolkit. Uh, you can just go and search in the marketplace on MQL5. Again, if you've got any questions, come and meet me in the Telegram group. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoy using it um, and it does everything you want it to do. And let me know if there's any changes. Have a good day.